if it is important for human beings to continue to exist, then everyone really needs to be concerned about biodiversity conservation and, and loss of habitat and loss of roaming areas for big mammals and loss of pollinators and loss of the plants that the pollinators need. All this stuff is spinning out of control rapidly and meanwhile people are just watching their television sets and their, their handheld devices and playing games and uh, while the whole thing's unraveling. The topic of conservation uh, is becoming very, very challenging. And all the conservation organizations, they survive from raising funds and these grants are drying up. You know, the economic climate has changed massively. We unfortunately have chosen only one denominator to deal with. How we deal, how we do transactions, that's money. People have their forests and their uh, aspirations are changing and the value structure is no more in line with their tradition, then you see rapid degradation of the resources. You know, and that uh, actually has made this situation really, really complex. That unless there is a monetary gain, humans don't get motivated to do anything. I'm a big proponent of, of sustainable wild collection because I see that as a way that people, consumers, if they're educated, can support companies who get it to help protect some of the last remaining pristine ecosystems in the world. Ultimately, it needs to be driven by financial incentives. And for there to be financial incentives, there needs to be enterprise. And so when we're selling teas in supermarkets, what we're doing is raising funds for conservation. And uh, that's a really exciting conservation strategy. Mm. Some of the theories for biodiversity conservation are that local people are, are part of the solution. So they have to be stewards of the ecosystems to prevent uh, conversion of natural ecosystems to other uses. We should use that to our advantage for conservation. That's the only thing we can do. And I think the Fairwild project is, again, as I mentioned, it's one of the, one of the sensible uh, market-based mechanism. It, it is very sensible to do that and look at uh, opportunities in the market and use that as a tool for uh, conservation or social objectives. You make the, the tree more valuable alive and able to bear fruit and provide an income for a community for, you know, potentially hundreds of years in some of these big trees if it's done well. Yeah. So you bring, you know, conservation in through, through commerce and protect the forest that way. Can we get a number of areas in the world protected under management plans. I mean, even if, even if you're just collecting what people consider to be a weed, dandelions. Well, dandelions aren't the only thing that grow in a diverse meadow in Poland. All kinds of plants grow there. So if you can, you can protect a dandelion collection area, you're protecting a hundred other species and you're pro providing a livelihood for local people there. And this is the point of conservation again. If people don't take pride in saving forests, if they cannot appreciate the value, I think uh, the day will not be far that we, have, we will lose a major chunk of biodiversity in this landscape.